Okay, welcome to the first lesson in the section on um, electric circuits. Some of this will be revision from Key Stage 4, uh, but obviously we'll hope to take you further on. Um, so we're starting with electrical current. It's very, very important that we start with getting all the basics right, so it might seem a little bit of a repetition, but you really have to get the right models in your head um, for how all these things work. So we're going to describe what a current is first, we're going to define a unit for charge, and we're going to try and carry out some calculations involving unit conversions. Okay, Units, obviously a very crucial part of physics, and getting the answers right often depends on getting the right unit conversions. So, our basic definitions, current, well, what is an electrical current? Well, an electrical current is the rate of flow of charge around a circuit. In our uh, scheme, this will almost always be electrons flowing around a circuit, but obviously it could be um, ions carrying the charge. The unit for charge you will have come across in GCSE. So the unit for charge is the Coulomb, and the definition of the Coulomb is that one Coulomb of charge is the amount of charge when a current of one amp flows for one second. So if you see on an ammeter the reading of one amp, every second a coulomb of charge is flowing through that ammeter. Okay, a little model to help us look at that. There's just a very simple diagram of a circuit animated. So these little blue circles here are the electrons going round. Okay, something that's crucial to understand is that the wires are full of electrons before you start, so the charge is not coming from the battery. The battery is simply the thing which provides the push, if you like, the electric field that pushes the electrons around the circuit. The ammeter is measuring the um, current going through it, so it's measuring the amount of charge flowing through it every second. So you can put an ammeter in the circuit, the ammeter will go in series, so the charge has to flow through the ammeter for it to know the rate of flow of charge. And again, crucial from GCSE to remember that the charge isn't used up, so all the charge that's flowing here into the bulb is the same as the charge that's flowing out of it, so these two ammeters in this circuit will both have the same reading. So we need to look at it, turning this into some sort of equation. Um, and the equation is that the amount of charge that flows, we give the charge a symbol Q. Delta Q is simply the difference, the amount of charge that's flown through it, um, is I, the current, times delta T, which is simply the time that has passed. We can rearrange that equation to say the current is the amount of charge that flows per unit time. Um, I sometimes annoys people. I think, well, why is current I? Well, one answer is that there's far too many things involved here that begin with the letter C, but that actually comes from the original uh, current intensity or the French version of that, because a lot of the work on electricity was done with by uh, French people originally. So current intensity right, became I for current. And we need to get the right SI units. The, again, another French uh, thing here, the Système International units which are the standard units that we use in physics. And this is uh, Q, the charge is measured in coulombs, symbol capital C, because it's named after a person, Monsieur Coulomb. I, the current, measured in amperes, again after Monsieur Ampere, so it's capital letter A, and time, T, the time, which is measured always in seconds. Um, as I said at the start, the units are very important, so often we'll get a current in milliamps, and being able to convert milliamps into amps is a crucial part of this exercise. So you need to understand that one milliamp, milli means a thousandth, again from the French, mille is a thousand, so a milliamp is a thousandth of an amp, 0.001 amp, or more useful to us in standard form, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. So if we want to convert any other number of amps from milliamps to amps, all we have to do is multiply by 10 to the minus 3. So for example, 34 milliamps, you put into your calculator 34 times 10 to the minus 3, which will tell you 0 0.034, or if it stays in standard form, 3.4 times 10 to the minus 2 amps. Okay, this is the Greek letter mu, which stands for micro, and micro means millionth. So one microamp is one millionth of an amp, or 10 to the minus 6 amps. If we want to do the conversion, Simply take um, your, oh sorry, that should say micro there, microamps to amps multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. 
So 34 times 10 to the minus 6, okay, which is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 5 amps. All right, so always be careful, milli 10 to the minus 3, micro 10 to the minus 6. You will get some issues with time units as well. So don't forget, obviously, a minute is 60 seconds. An hour is 3,600 seconds. Okay, so a quick look at this little what's called a shuttling ball demo to um, give us a little bit of a chance to get our heads around this. Okay, I'll show you the schematic first and then I'll show you a little video of the actual apparatus. So this is a high voltage supply. We put a sensitive meter in here because we're going to get a very small current going around. Um, and what happens is we have a conducting ball here. Give it a little shove to get it started and then the conducting ball gets attracted towards one plate. Once it hits that plate it becomes charged with the same charge as a plate that makes it repel. It then goes to the other side, loses its charge on that plate, swings back to this plate, shuttles forwards and backwards. So you can almost kind of see a physical movement there going around the circuit. Obviously we can't normally see the electrons going around the circuit but we can see this ball going across which is carrying the electrons so we can do a calculation to tell us how many electrons are on the ball each time um, and that's a nice kind of physical demonstration that something must be transferred around the circuit for a current to flow. Okay this is the shuttling ball experiment this is designed to explain to you um, so you can actually see something which gives you an idea of the physical movement of charge around a circuit. What we've got here is a very high voltage supply this is the negative uh, terminal of the supply so the electrons will leave the negative terminal come down this wire through the ammeter onto this plate. Then there's a gap so they can't get across this gap in, unless they get onto this ball. So when I turn it on what happen, what's going to happen is the ball will be attracted to this side. Once it gets there it will get a negative charge that will repel it from that plate. It will be attracted over to that plate and then it will go, the electrons can get off on this plate, go down and the ball will transfer back to the side. So if I turn this on and I turn the voltage on Okay, the ball starts to shuttle across, so it's picking up electrons here, taking them over to there, the electrons come in off here, and it's going back to collect some more. If we measure the current, this will tell us how many coulombs of charge are going around the circuit every second. If we time how long the ball takes to get across here and back, that will tell us how many trips it makes per second. So if we put those two things together, we can look at how many electrons are being transferred per second, how many trips are made per second, and we can calculate the number of electrons on the ball for each trip. So if we want to calculate how many um, extra electrons on the ball, obviously remember there's loads of, ball, loads of electrons on the ball in the first place because it's made out of atoms and atoms have got lots of electrons in them. But what we're talking about is how many extra electrons get picked up by the ball. So we've got an average current from our experiment of 50 microamps. And we timed the ball and it made 25 journeys from one plate to the other in 10 seconds. So it's going across and back 25 times in 10 seconds. So the charge transferred per second must be 50 microcoulombs because that's what 50 microamps means. 50 microcoulombs of, microcoulombs of charge per second. And it took two and a half journeys because we had 25 journeys in 10 seconds. So two and a half journeys in one second. So the charge transferred in each journey is the total charge per second, our 50 microcoulombs, divided by the number of journeys it took to do that, which was two and a half. So it's taking 20 microcoulombs of charge each journey. And then perhaps the trickiest question is, well, how many electrons does it take to do that? So the way we do that is we know that one electron has got a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You'll get given that number on the data sheet in the exam, so don't worry about remembering that. So n electrons must have a total charge of n lots of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, the numbers are tricky, but hopefully the principle is fairly straightforward. You just take the no amount of charge on each electron and multiply it by the number of electrons, which we're calling n. n lots of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs is what we've got in each journey. And we know that each journey is taking 20 microcoulombs, so 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs of charge. So then just a bit of simple algebra, just divide down by there. So n is 20 times 10 to the minus 6 over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which means every single journey there, we get 1.25 times 10 to the 14 electrons. That's 125 million million electrons every time that ball goes from one plate to the other. 
Okay, so just a few questions to see um, if you can handle the numbers involved in this. So a torch bulb passes a current of 120 milliamps. How many coulombs of charge flow through the lamp in one minute? Okay, two traps here. This is in milliamps. This is in minutes. So our first two jobs are to turn the milliamps into amps, multiply by 10 to the minus 3, gives us 0 0.12. Okay, you've always got a little mental check there, 120, that's less than a thousand milliamps, so that's less than an amp. Okay, just have that little mental check in case you make a little slip. One minute, of course, is 60 seconds. So then we do our equation, Q equals IT. You usually don't bother to write the deltas in there, so just Q equals IT. So 0 0.12 times 60, we get 7.2 coulombs. What you get in an hour, well, it's the same calculation, but you need to just be careful that an hour is 3,600 seconds. Again, Q equals IT. So now we've got 0.12 amps for 3,600 seconds. That gives us 432 coulombs of charge. Okay, question two. Sometimes if you buy a car battery, you will see a rating on it in this strange unit called amp hours that um, some electrical engineers and people like to use. This is not the standard unit for charge, but if you think about it, it is actually a unit for charge because it's a current times a time. Okay, so one way of thinking about this is that you could get a current of one amp out of that battery for 36 hours before it ran down, okay? I've been careful here not to say runs out of charge because remember the charge isn't coming out of the battery, but it's providing the energy to push the charge around. You could have two amps for 18 hours or four amps for nine hours, all these calculations would give you the same answer for how much charge it can give the energy to. Okay, so two conversions to do here. Uh, one hour is 3,600 seconds, and then we need to know we've got 36 hours. So 36 hours is 129,600 seconds. Okay, so Q equals IT. Well, the I bit was simple here because it's one amp for 36 hours. So one times 129,600 this battery can give the energy to 129,600 coulombs of charge. Okay, if it does that um, quicker, you'll get more current for less time, but you'll always get that amount of charge flowing through the battery before it runs out of energy. Okay, the last one, which is the trickiest one. Um, so an electron beam in a cathode ray tube, a beam tube, carries a current of 125 microamps. What charge is delivered to the screen of the tube every second? Well, 125 microamps means 125 microcoulombs of charge per second. Okay, you can formalize that as Q equals IT. So Q, the charge, is I, the current of 125 microamps, times one second, which just gives you 1.25, just to turn it into standard form, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. Okay, so every second, that's the amount of charge. How many electrons is that? Well, again, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 to, and 19 times n is the number of electrons because one electron's got this much charge, so n electrons will just multiply that number by n. And that must be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4. So we just do the same calculation. Divide the total charge by the charge on each electron. It gives us 7.8 times 10 to the 14. Um, electrons every second okay just be careful with your powers here this is a positive number this is a very big number okay compared with very small numbers with the minuses okay just it's very easy to just make a little slip there with the signs seconds the minus one this is just our way of writing per second